Boruto will soon be left alone in his journey against the unprecedented fate. But the Star of Hope will awaken in his right eye to help him handle the forthcoming darkness. Not just that, he will certainly unlock more techniques like the Shinjutsu and the hints are hidden within chapter 13. So before understanding Boruto's hustle of awakening more powers, let's go back to Kashin Koji who has become the most interesting character with just a single chapter. The reveal of the Kara members having she by self and only the lucky ones unlocking divine abilities has brought in a variety of possibilities. First and foremost, Kashin Koji's delayed awakening of prescience power has made it possible for Kawaki's close teammate to also unlock a Shinjutsu. Delta may be on her way to unlock a divine technique, which could come handy to Kawaki. It's a huge possibility considering how Koji, who didn't expect to unlock any such power, also got his hands on a broken one. Now before you tell me Boro didn't have any Shinjutsu, which kinda proves that it's basically a matter of luck to get your hands on these powers. We have already seen Hidan using voodoo type of powers that he obtained from Lord Jashin, and one of the attributes of Jashin was immortality. Speaking of this mysterious entity, with the new developments in the story, I'm pretty sure that he was an Osusuki god with dark Shinjutsu powers, explaining the mysterious abilities of Hidan. So if immortality is a trait of a divine being, and Boro was modified with godly cells, yet he did not awaken any Shinjutsu, then it's highly likely for him to come back to life, even though he was vaporized completely by Momoshiki. The divine art of immortality could fuse all his molecules together and he would make a return in the most unexpected manner. In the anime, he preached to his followers that the Osusuki clan were benevolent gods and benevolent to humanity, and their guidance would grant them world peace through the infinite Tsukuyomi. His devotion to Osusuki's was similar to Hidan's devotion to Jashin. This enhances the possibility for Boro to be immortal. Even his name translates to savior, and he acted as the savior of lands in the anime. This is why I think his return is highly plausible. Now talking about Kashin Koji and how he would influence the story in the future, I think Boruto is destined to awaken a divine power with the help of Koji. It could be the Jogun or some other divine arts, but it's more likely to be the pure eye and whatever technique Boruto would acquire through this Jojutsu. The divine power of Jogun has been set up as Boruto's last hope in the anime. This means he will only awaken this eye after he loses every other supporting pillar, which includes Kashin Koji. So how possible is it for Koji to just die so that Boruto could transcend onto a unique phase of his character development? Well, what I have notice is that Koji and Shinju's plot point has been inspired from Jiraiya and the Six Paths of Pain. The story could take an approach similar to Jiraiya's legacy while marking an end to the life of his clone. The very first reason for me to believe this comes from the Shinju's desire to trace the partner of Boruto. They won't let Koji escape without paying for his deeds. So basically an enmity is being formed between the Shinju's and the Sanin clone. This indicates a potential fallout between the two parties and as predicted by Ishiki, the end of Koji's legacy would be similar to how Jiraiya went down. So Kashin Goji going on a secret mission to destroy the Shinjus himself is something very plausible, especially because he has the power to see the potential futures and if he sees an opportunity where he could make the future slightly better, he would definitely take it. There is no point in sidelining the entire load on Boruto. Koji could have figured out something that could potentially become a hurdle in the plans of the Shinjus. So after figuring out that potential loop, he could depart on a mission to defeat the Shinjus only to face death by the hands of Jura. And just like how the loss of Jiraiya was a huge turning point for Naruto, the death of Kashin Koji could serve as a major blow to Boruto. So now that we know the potential reason behind how Boruto could tap into more power, let's understand what would help him in unlocking the Shinjutsu. There are two reasons for me to refer to Boruto's upcoming abilities as Shinjutsu. First and foremost, if he taps into Momoshiki's powers, then all his techniques would automatically be referred to as Shinjutsu, simply because Shinjutsu are the divine techniques used by Osusuki being. Furthermore, the source of Boruto's other powers like Uzuhiko is mischievous. According to Koji, it's a power that he was about to learn in the future, but by using the prescience ability, he was able to teach him this technique in advance. This means there are ways for him to learn broken powers that have already been set up in the future timelines. The Uzuhiko could be a Shinjutsu that some DT was about to teach the prodigy in the future, but just because he has learned it in advance, it has become a bit puzzling for us to guess the true originator of this technique. It could be another Osusuki or maybe even some DT, as the mechanism of Uzuhiko doesn't appear to be a shinobi made technique. Moreover, the name of this power is related to the clan of the protagonist, which mysteriously disappeared long time ago. So this technique being a hint for this clan to make a comeback in the story is also possible. One of the reasons that make me think that it may be an Osusuki power has something to do with how this ability actually works. So basically the user pulls chakra from the planet's rotation 
and other kinetic energies that it never stops producing and just because of that the user can absorb as much energy as he wants making the uzuhiko limitlessly powerful this reminds me of how osusuki's absorb the chakra of a planet after consuming the divine fruit the only difference being the uzuhiko doesn't deplete the chakra of a said planet while the osusuki's way of devouring planets causes harm to that planet this technique seems like a trump card that an osusuki would play to instantly win a battle by charging as much centrifuge Google force of the planet as he can and what's more shocking is that Shibai Osusuki was shown utilizing a similar technique in one of his panels so could it be that he was the one to teach Boru to the Uzuhiko in the far away future that Koji foresaw well i think that's not the case here cuz if Shibai has the power to intervene into the mortal world without being physically present there he won't necessarily land on the planet just to teach Boru to a broken power also it's very likely for Uzuhiko to be a power that the other Osusukis also know about and instead of charging the planet's rotation into the Rasengan, the other Osusukis could simply use a planet's chakra to ramp up their other techniques. So Uzuhiko may not be the actual name of this power. Koji must have seen Boruto using it through his prescience lens and when they were thinking of a name, they came up with Uzuhiko, which translates to Vortex Prince. Not to mention Boruto could have learned more abilities from Kashin Koji that would be revealed to us later in the story and some of them could certainly be Shinjutsu's considering how the Uzuhiko technique works. Another way for Boruto to unlock the divine art is by getting his hands on the remains of Shibai. This theory promotes the possibility for the manga Boruto to awaken the Jogun in a totally different manner than the anime. Kashin Koji knows a lot about Amado, so he must also be knowing the secret hideout where he has concealed the divine cells. Boruto being an Osusuki just needs to absorb the cells with his Gamma Seal, which is how he would unlock the divine Dojutsu, the Jogun. Moreover, since Amado is not aware about the situation of Kashin Koji, he wouldn't be worried about the cells getting stolen because he believes the only person person who knew about them has already died but Koji's tricky situation might force him to obtain the Shibai cells just to give Boruto a broken divine upgrade now let's talk about the prescient Shinjutsu and how it's about to shape Boruto's future basically how everything will lead to the village getting destroyed as portrayed in the very first episode when Koji said to Boruto that in every future that he saw it was Kawaki who got devoured after which the world collapsed he indirectly hinted that the death of Kawaki is what could fix this timeline once for all but just because Boruto was unwilling to go down that way, he would eventually end up in a situation where the sacrifice of Kawaki would be prevented. But the most unprecedented thing to happen would be the chaos that Kawaki himself will bring to the shinobi world. This means Boruto did prevent the worst possible future, maybe with the allied effort of Kashin Koji. But what he wasn't aware about was Kawaki's rise to power, something that not even Koji was able to foresee. Now the reason why Koji didn't foresee the events of the prologue sequence could have something to do with the limitation of prescience power. It could be that he cannot look into the future beyond the point where he died. This means at the time of the flash forward sequence, Koji must have already been dead, which is why he wasn't able to warn Boruto about Kawaki. It also explains why Boruto acts surprised at the only possible outcome. It's something that no one warned him about and there was no way for him to see it coming. That's why he couldn't believe Kawaki would go that far. Also, I believe a huge role for Himawari is being cooked, just cause Koji was shocked after knowing she has awakened the Ninetales power. This means it was something that didn't happen in any other timeline and just as it has taken place in the present timeline, it could drive everything into a completely unexpected direction, something that not even Koji's prescience could catch. So Himawari would have some role in influencing Kawaki to the point of becoming the destroyer, as Kishimoto has already teased the character development arc of Kawaki to the point of saying he wasn't even conscious of himself, which may be why he doesn't take care about his outfit and all. It must be Aida who has bought him this outfit, but once he starts finding value in his own existence as well as the purpose to destroy the shinobi world he would not only choose the attire that goes with his ideology but would also start walking down the steps of someone whom he hated the most this may be why his outfit looks similar to jigen in the flash forward well you can check out more such theories in these videos don't forget to subscribe for more amazing stuff and i will see you next time